Welcome back to my channel for another video on a topic I worked on for quite a while. And what I would call the topic is the gigapixel challenge. And a lot of people talk about gigapixel images. And if you think about it, a gigapixel image is 1000 times the information of what you have in a one megapixel image. And uh, that clearly is a lot of resolution. The limit currently is like here on the GFX 100S with its medium format sensor, 100 megapixel. If you go for a multi-shot feature, it's 400 megapixel. On the famous Phase 1 IQ4, we have 150 megapixel native resolution on an even larger sensor than what you have here on the Fuji GF X100S, but that is still far away from a gigapixel image. The camera lens combo I used for my own gigapixel challenge is first of all on the camera body, the Fuji GF X100S, because with its native resolution of 100 megapixel and a multi-shot feature for 400 megapixel, I only need four images with the usual overlap to get beyond one gigapixel. And uh, the lens I used is a Canon tilt shift lens. So it's the TSE 50 millimeter widest open f 2.8. It's by the way, also a macro lens. It's one of the best tilt shift lenses I'm aware of. And clearly in order to mount this on my Fuji GF X100, I had to use a suitable adapter. In this case, it's a Viltrox adapter. I'm going to speak quickly about it in the course of the video. And with this camera lens combo, I started my gigapixel challenge. And as I said, lots of obstacles in the way, some solutions, let's get started. Let's start by introducing this Viltrox adapter here. So it comes in a box and it's called the EF GFX. So that's the Canon EF mount to the GFX camera body autofocus mount adapter. And there are all kinds of features on that lens. So compatibility, of course, it has autofocus built in. It has an upgrade port. So via USB cable and in a connection to your computer, you can upgrade the firmware and it is only 85 gram heavy. So that's a nice adapter. It's mounted here. It works quite well. Now the autofocus feature is good for nothing on a tilt shift lens because these are fully manual lenses, but clearly you can shoot the full range of EF lenses on all GFX camera bodies from Fuji. By the way, and as a side remark, there are cheaper adapters, which you can use to mount Canon EF lenses to the Fuji GFX system. So here's one from PhotoDiox Pro EOS to GFX. And uh, this one here fits my tilt shift lens here. So let's quickly line this up here. And then here, this mounts into the GFX camera system. So that works also, but the problem here is, it's actually a very good adapter, very solidly built. But if you look at it, and that's what I mentioned before, there are no electronic contacts here. So it's really purely for mounting a lens to a camera body. And that means you don't get metadata. You cannot control the lens from the camera body. And that's of course not as convenient as the adapter I use for my gigapixel challenge. Now let's talk about the lens here. So this Canon tilt shift lens. And first of all, it's a lens with a weight of 945 grams. So you get close to one kilogram. The filter thread is 77 millimeter and it has a fantastic build quality. It's fully manual, so you have to focus here via the focus ring. And uh, I think personally, the travel way of that focus ring is not as pleasant and comfortable as you have it on some other large manual focusing lenses, but it works and gets the job done. The topic of this video is my gigapixel challenge, but people who follow me, they know I can hardly resist to provide specifications of a lens I have in display. So let me quickly give you in a couple of minutes, all the data you might want to know. So in the lens construction, we have 12 elements in nine groups. We have a closest focusing distance of 0.273 meters. So for 50 millimeter focal length, you get really close. We have a maximum magnification of 50%. So this is a true macro lens. And you can also via that adapter here, steer all the parameters on the lens in the camera body. And here, for instance, is my control wheel for the aperture. And if you look at that here, this is widest open and now I stop it down all the way to F32. And whatever you do here on your camera body reacts in the lens in the way it's supposed to react. And that is nice because many adapters where you shoot non-Fuji lenses on the Fuji GFX camera system, they actually don't have electronic contact. So you miss the metadata, you clearly don't have autofocus 
and you also can very often not fully control the lens parameters by the camera body. Totally different here. This combination works like a charm and I liked a lot shooting with it. I don't want to speak in this video about tilting the lens and what kind of effects you can achieve with it. I want to use it for shifting and clearly by shifting the lens with respect to the image plane, I can change my image composition and get things better in scene in the way I want to have it. And uh, I can, for instance, adjust not to have too much foreground, but get a bit more of the background and in this way lift it up so I don't get falling lines, for instance, in architecture. But for the sake of completeness, let me quickly mention the specs on tilting and shifting. We have on the tilt side plus minus 8.5 degrees and on the shift side plus minus 12 millimeter. The tilt mechanism needs an adjustment wheel, which is here and then here an unlock mechanism and then you can actually loosen the screw here and then with this adjustment wheel you can tilt the lens in both directions as I said by plus minus 8.5 degrees. And you don't get stuck in a vertical tilt, you can also do this in horizontal ways and here is a control switch. If I press this down I can rotate it by 90 degrees and then I can also tilt this in the horizontal axis here. So that is something I don't want to cover here, but for the sake of completeness, I wanted to quickly mention. What I wanted to use for my gigapixel challenge is the shift functionality of the lens. And again, we have here an adjustment wheel, a smaller one than what we have on the tilt side. And we can loosen the screw here and then we can shift the lens. And you see here how this is moving in vertical direction. And I show in a moment how we can also rotate that mechanism so it shifts in other directions. Quite nice and as I said before we have here plus minus 12 millimeter of headroom. The lens can be rotated and it locks in into seven fixed positions. So let's quickly demonstrate this. Let me go down here. Here it has a hard stop. So this is position number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And these seven positions are available for a lock-in. And with this, you can shift in basically a lot of directions, vertical, horizontal, but also diagonal. And in this way, create nice panorama stitchings. Based on what I just said and the flexibility you get with a tilt shift lens like this one here, there are many variations of the scheme how you can do panorama stitchings. What I was going for was plain vanilla and simply only four portrait orientation frames. And I used the multi-shot option on the GFX100S to actually have 400 megapixel on each of these frames and four of these frames then, if there would be no overlaps, would carry me up to 1.6 gigapixel. Now, in panorama stitchings, you typically need some space for overlaps, so let's say 30 to 40%. At the very end, I ended up in an image in a way stitched together that it was in size beyond one gigapixel. And now I wanna quickly show these images and then talk about the different options, challenges, and kind of solutions you have if you want to really end up with a gigapixel image. Arriving home after the shooting, the first step is to transfer the images, which are all raw files, to the MacBook Pro and then getting them processed with Fuji's pixel shift combiner. So you take the 16 frames from the multi-shot option, you place them in a separate folder, and then you open the pixel shift combiner and reference back to this folder. And then the 16 frames will be processed by Fuji's pixel shift combiner into a 400 megapixel image. This process works sometimes well, sometimes not so well, as you can see here in a yellow writing completed but defect detected. But typically I don't care that much because the frame will be compiled and you can use it later in post-processing in the way I'm going to show in a moment. Finally, then I had four frames in Lightroom. I post-process them. So you see here, these images have already been edited. And each of these frames has a pixel dimension of 400 megapixel. In terms of post-processing, here's the typical before and after view. And I also want to crop in a bit to show the level of detail we have captured in these 400 megapixel frames. So let's have a look here, for instance. You see on the left-hand side before, right-hand side after. So the effect of post-processing is visible here. And clearly 400 megapixel is a huge resolution and the GFX100S always delivers in all dimensions. I've shown this many times on my channel. 
You get a lot of details here and a lot of things to look into if you go to the 100% view. I also exported the four frames as JPEGs to use them later in Photoshop. And then the trouble started to kick in. So I tried in the usual way, what I always do in Lightroom to merge these four frames into a gigapixel panorama shot. And that didn't work as you can see here on the message I got on display. Lightroom is just not able to merge these four 400 megapixel frames into one large super panorama. And since panorama stitching always works for me in Lightroom and I'm not by nature a gigapixel image creator, I had to do some research and found in the documentation of Lightroom the following note saying that the maximum dimension actually is only 512 megapixel. So Lightroom can be safely excluded as an enabler to generate a gigapixel image. Since I already post-processed the four frames in Lightroom, and already exported the JPEG images, I went over to Photoshop and this time I did my research before I started the process and found that Photoshop has enormous headroom when it comes to pixel dimension, namely it supports a maximum pixel dimension of 300k times 300k pixels per image. So I opened Photoshop and under automate you find photo merge and if you go for that another dialog will open up and then you can choose the frames which in my case are four 400 megapixel frames, upload them and start the process. Photoshop then processes the four 400 megapixel frames without any flaws and starts to align layers and merges the four frames into one final image. We then get this frame here and that's clearly a nice final image merged from these four frames. And you also see at the borders of the image some dashed lines which indicates the algorithm Photoshop applied for content aware filling in areas where you otherwise would have to crop in. The problem is with this image, if we look into the pixel dimensions and uh, we see this here in the lower left hand side corner, we have in the horizontal dimension 38,616 pixels and in vertical direction we have 22,544 pixels. And if we multiply the two numbers, we end up at a huge number which divided by 1 million gives us 870 megapixel and not 1 gigapixel. In consequence, yes, we generated a huge 870 megapixel panorama shot, but no, we didn't generate a gigapixel image. In order to finally come beyond 1 gigapixel in the stitched image, we need to make some changes to the photo merge dialog. In my approach, I went for spherical and also experimented with other settings. But even if you go for auto and leave the decision with Photoshop, it will not come to a gigapixel. It will stay around eight to 900 megapixel in the finally stitched image. So what I did then is I went for perspective and you see in the visual or graphical representation of the way Photoshop is looking at that problem that this might give me a higher pixel dimension and on the lower parameters of course I did choose blend images together I did choose vignette removal but that's more a housekeeping because there is no vignetting going on in these four frames I used the geometric distortion correction and that's important to get the megapixel I use content aware fill transparent areas and then I ended up at this image here and I also used in Photoshop the quick mask mode to actually see outside of the red area where we have areas where Photoshop was filling in transparent blank spots in the image. And that algorithm actually works typically quite well, in particular on the sky, but there are areas here in the green grass where you see it didn't do a really good job. So I had to crop in again and make the image smaller and basically cropping out these areas where I think that Photoshop didn't do a good job in filling transparent areas. With this final image, let's go to 100% magnification or crop and let's see what insane amount and level of detail we captured in that gigapixel image here. The pixel dimension of this final image is significantly beyond one gigapixel as we can easily verify here. Because on the horizontal axis we have 47,000 
312 pixels and on the vertical axis or the height we have 26,794 pixels. If we multiply this all together then we end up at around 1.27 gigapixels. So finally we achieved our goal. We are now significantly beyond one gigapixel and that will be the final image we are now trying to export. In the settings for Photoshop I have set up quick export for JPEG with full quality so 100% and full size and actually exporting this as a JPEG worked like a charm, no flaws, no obstacles and I finally had a fully developed gigapixel image. Still being in Photoshop I also tried to export this as a TIFF file but I got the following message saying could not save this document because the document exceeds the 4 GB limit for the file data in this format. I could have saved it in the large file format but that's not what I wanted to do and I had my JPEG. But the conclusion of all of this clearly is make sure you post process the individual frames before you stitch them together because after you stitch them together the file will be so large that any post processing efforts will become very difficult. Being a phase one and Fuji medium format shooter I of course also have a licensed version of Capture One on my MacBook Pro and I tried to do the panorama stitching there and wanted to find if this works better than with the Adobe software and doing so I had the four frames. I played with different projections but very soon the file size was indicated as becoming too large. So doing some research actually revealed that the maximum resolution which is supported on Capture One for instance for panorama stitchings is 715 megapixel so I had to go for smaller size and again didn't achieve my gigapixel image. Nevertheless I got a very large in terms of pixel dimension panorama here and I think in general the distortion correction in panorama stitching at Capture One is better than what I saw on Lightroom on smaller files or on Photoshop for the full gigapixel experience. Before coming to an end in this video I also wanted to show some results from night photography with the GFX 100S and that tilt shift lens from Canon which is just terrific. I think the sharpness of this lens is playing nicely with the high resolution sensor in the Fuji GFX 100S. If you look at the image here at 100% crop this is just so clean, so clear and so crisp. I really like these images coming from that camera lens combo. And then shooting uphill a monastery not far away from Zurich you see how the shift lens really plays out. This is without shift the image what you see but then shifting the whole scene and stitching it together by adjusting the lens accordingly. I got this nice final image here which if we zoom in and look at the different details here is just amazing how this monastery was captured by the GFX 100S in combination with the Canon TSE 50mm f2.8. That's basically all I wanted to say and show. Thanks for being with me on that journey to my gigapixel image and uh, I think at the very end the conclusion is that it is not so easy to go for gigapixel photography and typically end of story is where the maximum solution is of the post-processing software you are using and of course also processing the large file size of a gigapixel image creates all kinds of different challenges. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel, there's always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.